friends, uh, neighbors, and loved ones. This is another edition of Celebrating Democracy. On this day, uh, just a few days before Pearl Harbor Day, I'm going to present my final edition, and I'm going to take you back to uh, 2016 when I attended the USS West Virginia annual reunion in Seattle. It was uh, really an honor, and the gentlemen you see in the picture at that time were the last survivors of the USS West Virginia, BB-48, who served during World War II, and two uh, of these veterans uh, served with my father, Vernon, on that day, December 7th, 1941. When we arrived at the USS West Virginia BB-48 annual reunion reception in Seattle, I was in awe. I was sitting with two of my father Vernon's only surviving shipmates from that fateful day, December 7th, 1941. Jim Downing was the ship's captain and postmaster. He remembered my father. I couldn't wait to talk with Jim. I felt a kinship right away when looking into his eyes. Jim was 103 years old in the fall of 2016. He was as sharp as a tack and very alert. Jim was one of the oldest Pearl Harbor survivors at that time, and he was famous indeed. Jim authored several books. He traveled around America each year until he couldn't to share his stories. Jim passed away in 2018 at age 105, a long life of serving America indeed. Jim Downing was and always will be my hero and shipmate of my father. Bob Benefall knew my father too, but not that well. He mentioned an encounter with Vernon once. I don't think Bob liked Vernon. But he didn't say that. Vernon was a badass at times. Bob was a radio man just like me. So we talked about that as if we both served together on the ship. Bob loved to talk about radio communications, cryptography in those days, and tubes he had to replace all the time. Bob would say 90% of the problems were fixed by replacing tubes back then. I learned that in radio school too, in 1963. So I reflect on my conversation with both. Jim Downing knew my father Vernon pretty well. After all, he was the ship's chaplain and postmaster. Jim was like a father to Vernon. Vernon would often talk about his wife and new son, Jim said with a kind smile. I recall Cox and Sparks mentioning his new son. Can't remember the name though, Jim would say as we talked. I was so moved. My brother Jerry was born three months before Pearl Harbor. Vernon sent postcards and letters home to Marcella and his family in St. Paul each week without fail. I knew this fact. Tears flowed from my eyes as I listened to Jim talk about my father. Vernon was a sweet young man on one side and a fierce warrior on the other side. I'm like my father in that way. Vernon was worried that he would never see his family again Jim would say as we talked. I asked a few questions for sure. A few more tears later, I felt my father's soul in that moment and thought, I am my father's son. 
I was so moved and honored to meet Jim Downing and Bob Benefil. They are both with my father and all the USS West Virginia shipmates now. Bless them all. They will never ever be forgotten, Vernon would say often in his life. So let me leave you with my father Vernon's first-hand account of that Sunday morning, 8 a.m., December 7th, 1941. I was on the third deck, heading for the anchor windlass room when the first torpedo hit the USS West Virginia. From there, more bombing and torpedoes when all hell broke loose. Men in the brig were screaming for help. I could not respond. There was no time to check where the Marine guard was with the keys to the cells. Evidently, he had already been hit. The men in the brig were engulfed in water and perished. I worked my way up to the second deck with water up to my waist. By this time, I came to a hatch with the manhole still open, leading to the main deck. I barely made it out of the escape hatch and was ordered by Lieutenant Stark to close that hatch. Close that hatch, said Lieutenant Stark. The men were still down there, but it was too late for them. That was the first time I heard the Japs were attacking our fleet and the whole island. I watched one of my best shipmates and friend get himself killed, Roy Powers. He stuck his head out the port side, close to the shipfitter's shop. And about that time, another torpedo hit and the concussion blew his head off. His body fell back on the deck, headless. After that, it was a matter of surviving. There was no defense. The ship was already listing to port at about 35 degrees angle. I worked myself up further on the deck and observed the commanding officer, Captain Mervyn S. Benyon, heading for the bridge. The strafing and bombing was still on. When I arrived on the main deck going forward to the number one turret, strafing still going on, I dived under the overhang of the turret. Communications was out, so by word of mouth heard the order. All hands abandoned ship. Captain Benyon was lying on the wing of the bridge, mortally wounded. He asked the dock what kind of chance he had and was told, not much, Captain. Then Captain Banyan said, leave me on the bridge and this is my last order. All hands abandoned ship. He died right after that. After that order, I jumped over the side to starboard and swam to Fort Island. Us guys that made it were standing on the beach watching the U.S. Arizona blow up sky high. What a helpless feeling. I had torn my white uniform up to use as emergency treatment bandages for the wounded. Anyway, to make a long story short, we dashed across the field under strafing conditions to shelter. In the BOQ, we were able to shower in there and savage, salvage clothes from the lockers and help organize the harbor patrol. And was with that duty for a few months, then assigned to new construction with the 5th Amphibious Force hitting the beaches of the South Pacific all the way, and then finally Iwo Jima and Okinawa until the peace treaty was signed aboard the USS Missouri in Tokyo, Japan. 
People like myself could go on and on, but that would take a book. Vernon H. Sparks, December 7, 1941. Battleship USS West Virginia. So this will be my uh, final edition of Celebrating Democracy. I made a commitment to do this between Veterans Day and Pearl Harbor Day. And I do this with honor, pride, and in thinking of veterans of all worlds, wars. And I leave you all with that to think about, to think about your families, think about veterans, think about our roots, what it was like back then and what we've all been through in America since the beginning. So I wish you a great day. I'll be back later with more Celebrating Democracy. Down the road, more about the Pacific War with my father, Vernon H. Sparks.